Hey there, welcome back and thanks for joining me. All my supplies and equipment are down in the description box, so check that out. Most of them have links. And uh, if you like these videos, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when a new one comes out. So what we're doing today is just doing a simple glitter job on a little wine glass. So <clears throat> what we want to do first is I'm going to do the epoxy where I put the epoxy on and then the, put the glitter. So it's very, very thin. So I'm going to mix up about five mil. And I don't mind if it's a little more than I'm going to need just because um, I make the little keychains and stuff and fun things like that for the grandkids. Now you want to stop before you think you get to your line because once it settles down it will go a little bit over. Now when you've got these bottles, let the air bubble go back up in it before you try to close them off. That way it won't get clogged up on you. So there is the epoxy. Now I don't really mind about the bubbles because I take a kitchen torch to it and we get those all worked out. So it's not really a big deal. I would have done something else on this tumbler, but it's got engraving. Can you see this? So that's going to show through on what I was going to paint, but uh, I'll just pick another one to do that on. All right. So I'm just going to hold this, and I'm going to put this epoxy on, and then I'll go straight into the glitter and... We'll get that done real quick. There's probably an easier way. Yeah. I'm trying to keep from picking it up, but I'm going to. All right, let me spread this around. Now I've got this little guard on. So hopefully that'll help with the real the top of it. And this one is the, this is the KS Resin. I also use Stone Coat Countertop. Go ahead and get that bottom done. Don't worry about getting this smooth, you just want to get it everywhere. But it'll self-level. I just want a thin, thin layer on it, just enough to catch that glitter. All right, I'm going to put it back in its holder. I am going to take this glove off. And put another one. I'm using this color glitter. And we'll change the paper. Because I got some epoxy on that. Thank you. 
All right. It doesn't get much better than that. There's a little bit right there. And there you go. That's the one color glitter. We're going to put this on the spinner, let it spin, and then we'll come back and epoxy. So here I am getting this uh, mixed up. This is my third coat, and it's I've got quite a bit in here, probably 10 mLs of A and 10 of B. I want this to be a good coat. Um, this is my third coat. Usually on glitter products, it's three. It's, you just almost can't get around it. So, And I do lightly sand to knock off the really tall stuff. I don't sand down to um, mess up the glitter, but if I have a piece sticking up, I'll get that level with everything else. So, um, you know, it's just kind of a hit and miss thing on that. Most of the time I don't have it. Sometimes I do. But this third coat will make this glass feel very smooth, and there you won't feel the ridges of the glitter or anything. So... This is the last one. All the other ones are done the exact same way. And I just kind of work uh, work it around and get it to a point where it's evenly covered. I don't worry about smoothing it out. It will self-level and then it turns the rest of the night. I usually do this at night and let it turn till in the morning. Okay, now I am back. We're going to do a coaster to match our wine glass. And this is right at 2.5 part A and 2.5 of part B. I've been stirring about three minutes. Really, really, really want to make sure all of it is done. I do not want any boo-boos on this. So, okay. Probably good. All right, now I'm going to pour this out. And this is roughly how I do pretty much all my glitter. I don't. I like doing the spray adhesives. It's just this just seems to be the easier ones. Okay, I'm going to try not to get my gloves in this. You know what? Nope, I don't want to get my gloves in this. So I'm going to smooth it really quick with this little stir. These are on Amazon. They're in my description below. They're about 5 for $5.99. Really easy to wipe off.
You just want to make sure you get everything really, really good and coated. Okay, I think I'm good on that. I've got a gnat right here. It's driving me nuts. So I'm really glad this is going to have glitter on it because if that guy decides to get in it, we won't see him. Now I'm going to go ahead. I have put all my glitter into glass jars. They don't seem to have static that way. All right. So I can feel this. Well, I don't know. It's going on pretty good. I just want to make sure it's on these edges really, really well. And they seem to be gliding. Good thing about these edges is they're raw, so you can tell if they're wet or not, so that helps. All right. And since I'm covering all this in glitter, I don't have to paint them white like I normally do. Okay, that is that. Let's slip this. Okay, I'm going to hit it with a torch gun, get rid of all these bubbles. I don't want anything happening underneath the glitter. All right, I am going to pick it up with this hand. Let's see if I can't get this on it. I messed up my first one of these. I was trying to figure it out and I kept trying to shake it off and shake any excess off and realized you're just not going to. Now I'm using this hand to kind of butt some glitter up against the side. That's why I'm pouring here. You see like there, I have a little bit that I need to stick on there. Okay, I got a spot not wanting to do it. Okay, this is where I usually run into trouble because I, I dab it. Okay, I think that's good. Now, I'm just going to leave that because if it's loose now, it'll be loose in a little bit. I'm going to pump that down right there. It's a little. Okay. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to let this get good and dry. Then we're going to shake off the excess. Then we'll epoxy this thing probably three times. So, all right, we'll be back. So yeah, I'm very pleased with this one. It turned out really great and I was really happy about it. Now, after I glitter, I always take some clear spray and spray the things down so that it'll hold my glitter down. My glitter won't pop up into the um, epoxy. And so yeah, the second one turned out really good. My first one was crappy, but this one's good. I thought it through again, and so, yeah, 
second one and it did really really good I'm very very happy with it okay I am taking a marker because these are hard to see maybe not for everybody but for me I have trouble seeing just the indentions on this cup so I take a marker and I mark my two lines try to mark them exactly the same if it's a little bit above the indicator line do both of them like that you you've got to get these equal or they will not perform the way they should and then I go in and put the A and B. And I'm probably guessing on this, and I don't remember, I didn't write it down when I did it, that I've got um, probably, maybe, I have no idea, maybe 10 total. Um, I think 15 might be a bit much, but uh, maybe 10 total. The f first um, epoxy after glitter it's almost going to feel like you don't have anything on it. It's going to sink down in that glitter and it's not going to have a really good surface anyway. Um, you're just kind of filling in the gaps. Um, so you want to mix this really, really well. Um, a good three minutes. I'm not sure if the three minutes is necessary for mixing or just to make sure it gets mixed, but for whatever it works. And that's... Uh, well, that's what we do. So now I'm just pouring this on here. Now I did pour extra thinking about it. The black and white tile I'm going to pour also since I'm, I've got the epoxy going. Um, I had a fly land in it and I just, you know, err. Um, yeah. And scrape him off and then I had to sand him out. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> yeah, not the things you think you're going to get up and do that day. But I did, so I'm epoxying it over so you can't see it. So, yeah, just rub this over, and you can see kind of how thick it is. It's You can definitely see it on there, but just to get it over those edges and make sure um, everything's covered well. And then we're going to let it sit for a good day or two. I would say two days on this one because this is a thicker coat. And then we'll come back and do it again. So this is one, and we'll do it two more times. <laughs> I'm not sure why I have this huge section of video where I'm not even talking. I'm not giving instruction. I'm not telling what I'm doing. Uh, so I, I don't know if I thought I was doing it out loud. It was just in my head. I don't have a clue, but I was listening to this, actually not listening, thinking what in the world? I just, I guess I just turned it on and started working. So anyway, that's why I'm having to do that voiceover that I don't like to do. <laughs> now back to your regular programming. And so while I've got extra epoxy, I'm going to go ahead and hit this one tile and get it up and out of the way. This is the one the fly landed in. <laughs> it's so disturbing when you come down and you see that, you know, bugs got stuck. So anyway, but this is the black and white. You can see there where I showed you where he was at. Um, you won't notice it when it's on there, but still, <laughs> it's just there. Uh, he's gone, but his spot's still there. Um, but yeah, just, this is the acrylic, uh, black and white that I used and I just pour it on the tile when it dries. Then I go back and, uh, put a coat of epoxy on it and put the cork on like you'll see here in a little bit, um, how I do the corks and it just makes for a really, really nice coaster set. Now just remember when you get done putting your epoxy on, you need to run a heat tool or a embossing gun over it and just get those bubbles popped where it'll be nice and smooth and pretty for you. And just remember, I go over a couple, three times in about 30 minutes. And after that, it starts setting up. So here I've taken this cup and I've got these on HeyMed, um, pretty inexpensive. And they have good prices on their things. So I usually get this type uh, of item with them. And I just go ahead and mark my lines where I want to uh, put my product and I do half A and half B equal parts. You want to make sure you have that. I 
All that racket in the background is my dogs and cats coming in and out of their doggy door that I've got in one of my lower windows. So they go in and out and that thing slams every time they come through. Now here I've got some sandpaper and this is the 320, I believe it is. It's not enough to put some deep scratches in, but it will smooth out or rough up. Um, I use this on the cups before I spray them just to kind of give them a, a, something to hold on to. And what I'm doing here is just knocking off the high points. Um, I'm not getting down in the epoxy. I don't want to mark it up uh, too bad, but I'm just knocking off anything that's kind of sticking up that may take two or three more coats just to coat that part. So I'm just knocking that off. And you can kind of see the roughness when it hits the light funny. That's what it's going to be after only one coat. This second coat will either completely do it or almost. And most of the second coats have almost done it. It just needs a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what this one turns out, but, uh, yeah, normally it's, go ahead and count on doing three. Now you'll see me in a second heat this up. It thins it out a little bit, makes it a lot easier to spread around and get even. Um, you don't want to get it too thin, but you, you know when you leave it at room temperature and if your room's kind of cool, it is pretty thick. Either one does fine. I've just now started really heating mine up. I've always done it just at room temperature. So either way, but that is a neat little trick if you need to uh, need some help in getting it spread out. I'm so excited it is done. Look at that. I am so excited. How cute is all that? Jeez. Okay, we're not finished and we need to do a couple more things. Okay, as an add-on, I had a couple of rough places right here and did not like it. So I re it. So three three tri uh, trips, coats, went on to this. It is perfect. I know you can see my light, but the reflection in it is unbelievable. It is like glass. So this is done. I am so crazy happy about it, but I have a mess over here. Look at these. I'm going to show you how to get those off. This is my embossing gun. Now what you want to do is heat this up. I only do one side. If you do everything, it's going to cool off by the time you get to it. So I'm going to do one side. And I'm pretty close. I'm within a half inch. Be good and warm. You're not going to mess the top of your uh, coaster up or anything like that. You're just warming this edge. A smart thing to do, don't do this. I do that some, but ooh, I'm very, I'm, I feel like I'm in control when I do that. Uh, but if I'm having to, to do like I'm doing now, I don't think I've got it warm enough. It should just slice like butter. There you go. That is it. That coaster is going to go on like 
nobody's business. better than that. Look at that. Straight. And just continue to do all four sides. Do not keep your X-Acto knife. I mean, this is rough on them, I'm sure. So, I have one for this. I don't, this really detailed stuff I do. I don't, I don't use my good, this one. I use a better one. done it's that easy I am so excited okay let me show you how to do all right let me show you how to do my cork I got my big piece of wood right here oh my goodness look Isn't that beautiful I've just epoxied it so this is its natural color it's smooth and oh my goodness so I'm gonna do I'll call ink on it and Give it to the person who gave me this piece of wood because they gave me other wood too. And um, just a thank you. So I hope it turns out good because if it doesn't, I'm not going to give it to her. Okay, this is just a little guillotine cutter. Um, let's see how big it is. Straight jumper. There, you see how big it is. So, I like this because it's got the guard, you know me. So, it's a We Are Memory Keepers. Now, I have found, if you cut it like this, it doesn't cut as well and crisp as this way. So, I take very little off. That much. Tiny bit. But it's amazing what it does. And I only do that on two sides. Now you can see it's a little bit shy of the edges. And you peel it and put it on there, and that is it. And there. I'm just, wow. Crazy, crazy. That is so fun. All right. I hope this has shown you some new stuff. Y'all go have fun.